So we've looked at one versus rest classification, which is one approach to extend binary logistic regression to the multi-class setting. In this video, we're going to look at softmax regression, which is in some way a more principled way to directly take a binary logistic regression model and extend it to the multi-class case. We'll see that softmax regression outputs a vector where you can interpret each of the elements in that vector as the probability of the input belonging to that particular class. So the idea behind softmax regression is to really start with binary logistic regression and see how we con can convert it into a model that can give us a probabilities for multiple classes. So this is just the model in binary logistic regression where in this case, the labels are either negative or positive. And what we did was, we, if this was the output of the model, then we interpreted the output of the model as the probability of being in a positive class. And that implies that the probability of being in a negative class is just one minus the output from the model. Now the problem is you can't just directly use this in the multi-class setting because now what we have is we don't have just one class, which is like the positive class, we now have up to capital K classes. Now what happened in the binary case was we implicitly got the probability for the negative class, but here we can't do it because we have more than just two classes. So the idea behind soft max regression is instead of just outputting a single value, as we did in binary logistic regression, the model is actually going to output a vector. And the vector is going to be structured in such a way that the first element in the vector, so now we've got a fat F there because we're getting a vector as the output, the first element is going to give the probability of being in the first class, the second element in the second class, and up, and so on, up to the kth element in the output, which gives us the probability of being in the kth class. And that's really the fundamental idea behind softmax regression. So what we will do is, we haven't actually defined the model, I haven't told you anything about the internals of how you're getting this number here or this number here. And what we're going to do is we're now going to build up to the softmax regression model, starting basically with binary logistic regression and then extending it to the multi-class case. Each element in our output, so we're, we're our model now outputs a vector, okay? And um, it takes us input X and it has this matrix W, which I will talk about in a second, but that's basically all of the parameter vectors stacked into one big matrix. Now, what we want is the model is going to give us a vector as the output. The first element in this vector should tell us the probability of being in the first class, the second element in the second class, and so on up to the kth element. So let's forget about probabilities just for a second. And let's just think about these elements as scores for being in the different classes. So let's say that for some input x, the score of being in class little k is just set to w little k transpose x. In other words, the kth uh, parameter vector, the dot product of that with x. So for example, for the first class, what we're going to do is we're going to have a w1 transpose x, and that's going to be the score for the first class. For the second class, we're going to have w2 transpose x, and that's going to be the score for the second class, and so on up to the kth class. Uh, that's the capital kth class. Okay, nice idea, but the problem with this is exactly the same as the problem we had with binary logistic regression. This thing here is actually not a valid probability. In fact, it can take on negative values and it can take positive values. So let's just bash this into a, a valid probability. So we want it to be positive, right? Probabilities are all positive. So let's just take the exponential of this thing. And that gives us some positive value. So we're updating our model now. The score for the first class is now going to be the exponential um, to the power w1 transpose x, taking the exponential there, and so on up to the exponential of the kth class. Great stuff. We've got a bunch of positive values here. 
but actually this is still not a valid probability distribution. And that's because if I sum up all these values here in my big vector, then I'm actually most likely going to get a value that's not between zero and one. The value is going to be positive, it's going to be some positive value, but there's no guarantee that if I sum up all these things, it's going to equal be equal to one. And of course, if we have a, a, a distribution, then if we sum up over all the case, then we should get a value equal to one. So let's bash this thing even more. What we're going to do is we're just going to normalize each of these elements with the sum of all of the elements. That's all, we, uh, all that we're going to do. So um, formally for one of the elements, little k, we just have the exponential weight vector times x. And then in the numerator here, we're just summing over each of the e to the power w uh, dot product with x for all the different classes. And in our model here at the bottom, this simply means that we're going to divide by the sum of all the j's from class 1 up to class capital K of E to the W, J, transpose X. Just dividing by that. And this now, this is softmax regression. Here we've got a model. The output of the model, if we look at all the different elements in our output vector, we sum them all, we get one. And that's the softmax regression model. Let's quickly think about the parameters of this model, right? So instead of having just a single parameter vector, now we've got a whole bunch of parameter vectors. So let's just write that there. So parameters. So here we've got uh, parameter vectors W1, W2, up to W capital K. And what we can do is we can stack all of those parameter vectors into one parameter matrix. And we call that parameter matrix capital W. And it's just equal to W1, the transpose of W1 along the row, the transpose of W2 along the row, and so on, up to W capital K, transpose again along the row. And that's our parameter matrix. And if you use that notation with the W uh, parameter matrix, the capital W, then you can write the model output as softmax of W times X, our input. How do we fit this model? Again, we're going to use maximum likelihood estimation as we did for binary logistic regression. And this is equivalent to minimizing the negative log likelihood. So you've got the negative of the log of the likelihood of our, in this case, parameter matrix, which you can just substitute this in from before. So here we've got, it's a product over logs, which changes into a sum over the logs. And here we've got the probability of the particular class. So that's class one, two, three, four, five, up to capital K for the input X, given um, our model parameters. And you can write this out a little bit more uh, completely in this form and just stay with me here. So we're summing over all, all our, our training items. Here what I'm doing is I'm summing over each of the possible classes, but I'm not actually doing that because I've got an indicator variable here. Uh, and just as a reminder, the indicator is equal to one if the thing inside is true and it's equal to zero if the thing inside this expression is false. So what this does is this indicator, if I'm summing up over all the different classes, this will only be one if um, the current training item actually matches the class under consideration. So for each of the n items, you're actually only going to get, have one of these terms. And the term that you're going to have for that particular training item is going to be the term corresponding to the little k corresponding to the class for that training item. Very similar to binary logistic regression, we can take the partial derivative of our negative log likelihood loss um, with respect to each of the parameter vectors, and that gives us this expression here. And if we have this expression of the derivatives, then we can again use gradient descent to minimize the loss with respect to each of the parameter vectors.
let's see what happens if we actually do that. We run um, multi-class softmax regression on the iris data set. Then this is the output of the model. Here we've got our setosas, our versicolors, and our virginicas. And you can maybe go back a little bit and see how the decision boundary for softmax regression, how that differs from one versus rest um, logistic regression. I just wanted to mention two more things about softmax regression. The one thing is how you actually encode the target output in your code if you're going to write softmax regression. The one option is to simply keep track of the individual classes. So with each X, you have a corresponding um, label, which is one, two, or three, for example. And then you just implement those equations that we looked at on the previous slide. An alternative that is very often used is that you use something called a one-hot vector to encode the target output. And a one-hot vector is a vector which is all zeros except for a one in a particular position. So here on this slide here, I've got the one-hot vector. It's actually a column, but I've just taken the transpose to make it easier to uh, write it down. And this element here, that would correspond to class one, this element here would correspond to class two and so on up to class K for this, um, for that last element. And what we do is we have zeros everywhere except for the class for this particular training item. At that dimension, we will have a one. So in this case, let's just call that little K. So in this case, we've got a one at little K, which tells us that this training item, that label, it corresponds to the little K category. So this is a convenient representation and very often in code, it allows you to actually vectorize your softmax regression algorithm because the labels are encoded as vectors. If we're going to use this, um, this convention here where the little kth um, dimension in your one-hot vector tells you whether this is from that class or not, um, then you can write down the loss function and the gradient in a little bit more of a condensed form just make sure you can see how this happens from the previous slides but here we've got the um, negative log likelihood and instead of the indicator function now we just have this um, vector notation here where we've stripped out the kth dimension of our one out vectors and similarly for um, the gradients we've got um, instead of the indicator function here here we've just got the dimension of our one out vector the second remaining thing, and this is actually the last thing that I wanted to say about softmax regression, is to comment on its relationship to binary logistic regression. So what we can do is we can consider the special case of softmax regression where we just have two classes, k is equal to two. And if you go through the definitions that we defined in this video, you can actually write this two class softmax regression problem as um, as follows, you have two elements, you've got two classes, and as a reminder, we're going to have two parameter vectors, a W1 and a W2. W1 is going to be the weight uh, vector for the first class, and W2 is going to be the weight, weight vector for the second class. But you can manipulate the prediction of the model a little bit, and then write it in this form. And what we see here is that um, the prediction actually for both of the classes relies on a single vector, W1 minus W2. Or you can take the negative and think that the whole thing depends on W2 minus W1. And this is just one single vector that this softmax regression model relies on. And in binary logistic regression, we had the positive and the negative class, and both of their predictions also relied on a single vector. So what you could do is you could say, I'm going to fit just this vector W2 minus W1. I'm going to give it a new name and I'll just call it W dash. And if you do this, if you write W2 minus W1 as the single vector W dash, then what you will see here is that you can actually write this as just the sigmoid of W dashes dot product with X. And here you've got one minus the sigmoid of W dashes dot product with X. And that's exactly what we do for prediction in binary logistic regression. So what we've seen here is that softmax regression is actually a generalization of binary logistic regression.